Hi, Derek here of McKinsey Print Consultants. Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to cover your final hearing in the child arrangement proceedings. You are now close to the end of what has almost certainly been a very torturous and stressful period for you. For some of you, it will be a year or so since you started proceedings. And for others, it may well be a lot longer. It's therefore vitally important for your children and you to get the right result so you can get back and enjoy the full and loving relationship that you all deserve. In today's video, I'm going to help you to understand what actually happens at your final hearing and how to best prepare for it. Now, just before we get into your video details, if you feel that this video is helpful, then you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button below, as you will probably find my other videos useful. Now that a pandemic has passed, most final hearings will be attended in court. But some are still remote, and for today's video, I'm assuming that your hearing is attended in person. If your final hearing is by remote video, then the same principles apply, but it's just a little trickier as you will be on video rather than physically in a court. Most final hearings are scheduled for one to two days, but they can be longer depending on the complexity of your case and if there are any witnesses that are required to give evidence. I will cover how the hearing will be typically conducted by the judge, but you should always be prepared for matters to be a little different in your case. Whilst most final hearings follow the same pattern, that is not always the case. And particularly if the differences between the parties' positions is not that great, the judge may wish to forego the full formalities of a final hearing and try to find a solution quicker. Now, if CAFCAS or Child Services are still involved in your case, then they should also be in attendance at the hearing. And the judge will start by inviting CAFCAS to provide an overview of how they see matters and give their recommendation as to what the final arrangement should be. You should already be aware of their thoughts and recommendation as they would have submitted their report prior to the hearing and this should have been copied to you. Now, as CAFCAS are the advisors to the court, the court will take their recommendations very seriously and be strongly guided by them. If CAFCAS's recommendations are mostly in line with your proposal, then you will be in a strong position. If there are elements that you don't agree with, or if you're in disagreement with the vast majority, then you will need to cross-examine the CAFCAS officer. The judge will typically ask CAFCAS a few questions to clarify or reinforce matters. It is then the party's turn to cross-examine the officer. The applicant should be invited first and then the respondent. If you are in agreement with the CAFCAS recommendations, then you simply inform the judge that you are in agreement and that you have no questions. If there are some points that you're not aligned with, then you need to ask intelligent questions on each of those points. To place doubt in the judge's mind and show that your proposal for these points make more sense and are in the best interests of your children. If you are totally opposed to CAFCAS's recommendations, then you have a tougher job if CAFCAS's view carries a lot of weight with the court, but it's not impossible and I was recently at a hearing whereby all the five of CAFCAS's recommendations were overruled by the court in my client's favour. But you do need a strong judge or magistrate for that. When questioning the CAFCAS officer, you should always be polite and respectful, even if you are in violent disagreement with them. On several occasions, I witnessed a party taking an aggressive attacking approach when cross-examining CAFCAS. This did them no favours whatsoever with the court, and it is not to be recommended. You need to ask smart, intelligent questions in a respectful manner. When both parties have completed their questioning of CAFCAS, 
it is then the turn of the applicant to be on the stand. If this is you, then you will be sworn in by the judge. The judge may ask you a few questions and will then hand matters over to the other party to cross-examine you. If you're actually represented, then the barrister will proceed to question you. Typically in a manner which undermines you, the barrister will do their best to get under your skin and to put words in your mouth. Each time the barrister attempts to place words in your mouth, you should simply deny the point and confirm that it is incorrect. You should answer the questions as clearly and most importantly as briefly as possible. And you can also use this opportunity to turn the questions to your advantage, as this provides you with an opportunity to put your spin on the question in hand by providing an answer that places you or your proposal in a very positive light. But don't try to get too clever as that could also trip you up. It's then the respondent's turn to be on the stand and their barrister may ask them a few questions first. To show to the court how wonderful and caring they are to their children, that is compared to you. It will then be your turn to cross-examine your ex. You don't need hundreds of questions going back years over your relationship. You only need to ask questions on the key points and differences in your proposals, or to query any false claims in their statement. The aim of the cross-examination is to show the judge that their proposal is flawed and that yours clearly serves your children's interests better and is therefore in their best interests. However difficult it may be, try your best to be polite and respectful and try not to get too clever or cocky. When the cross-examinations are over, both parties will need to provide a summary of their position and case. The judge will typically suggest a short break beforehand so that you can gather your thoughts. The respondent will give their summary first, and if represented, the barrister will waffle on and on and on about what a wonderful, caring, sensitive parent your ex is and how their proposal is by far the best option for your children. You will certainly be painted as an uncaring, selfish, demonic monster who only thinks of yourself and doesn't really care about what's in your children's best interest. Now, try your best not to get too upset or bothered by this, as they are just doing their job. And the judge has seen this a thousand times and by this stage in the hearing has almost certainly already made their mind up as to what they will order as the outcome. If you are the applicant, then you will go next. You only need to provide a simple summary of your proposal and why it is in the best interest of your children. It should be five to ten minutes long maximum and you don't even need to provide a summary if you are too uncomfortable. You should have prepared something beforehand to read out. You may have it word for word, or many people prefer to have a bullet list of points as an aid memoir that they can expand upon, as it is often comes over more naturally. You should also be prepared to adapt it a little, depending upon events that have occurred during the hearing, as you may need to reference them. The judge will then retire for a while to consider the case and then return to provide his verdict and the reasoning behind it. Then that's it. The long stressful year or so is over and you've hopefully got the outcome you desired or at least close to it. And you can pick up again with your lovely children. Now, I'm a firm believer in the outcome you get will be highly dependent upon the quality of the preparation that you do beforehand. There are three important things that you need to prepare beforehand. Your witness statement. This should be written in a very clear manner 
so that the court clearly understands the issues and why your proposal best meets the needs and interests of your children. There is a set format for this and it should always be as brief as possible to get your points over in a clear and concise manner so that it's very easy for the judge to understand your position. Secondly, and most importantly, are the questions that you prepare for the cross-examination of Kafkas, your ex, as well as any other witnesses that may be attending. You should ask smart questions that clearly get your points across to the judge. If you can make your point in with just one smart question, then that is far more powerful than asking five or more questions on the same point. This is not an easy task for most litigants in person, as it is an art form in itself, and you could almost certainly benefit by some experienced assistance. And thirdly, your summary. This is not quite so important, but in some cases, the matter may be in the balance, and an effective summary may just tip things in your favour. As I previously said, keep this to just five or 10 minutes maximum. Use bullet points as an aid memoir, as they typically work best. And I would suggest that you practice reading this two or three times before the hearing, so that you're familiar with it and more confident in actually delivering it in court. The final hearing for most people is pretty stressful as there is so much riding on it and they could benefit by some experienced assistance. And if you need help with your final hearing or just want to talk about your case, then go to www.mckenziefriendconsultants.co.uk and book your free consultancy with me. That's it for today, and if you found today's video helpful, then hit the subscribe button below, as you will probably find my other short videos useful. Bye for now, and until my next video. Thank you.